The Canadian Coast Guard vessel, the CGS Nemeo, maneuvers into dry dock for a routine inspection of its hull. Its crew patrols over 23,000 square kilometers of open water. They tend buoys and lights, maintain lighthouses, and carry out search and rescue activities. Not unusual duties for a Coast Guard vessel, except the Nemeo's hull has never been touched by salt water. And this dry dock is located in southern Manitoba. The Selkirk Marine Railway is on the Red River between Lake Winnipeg and the city of Winnipeg. It's the only large inland dry dock on the prairies. Originally constructed before the First World War, the Selkirk Marine Railway hauls large boats out of the water for hull inspections and maintenance. The need for the railway was determined by the history and scope of marine traffic on this major inland waterway. In the late 1800s, Lake Winnipeg and the Red River were major transportation corridors. Mississippi-style steamboats, lumber freighters, and fleets of fishing vessels sailed their waters. Around the turn of the century, excursion boats were popular. These floating palaces were considered some of the finest on the continent. By 1911, the chief engineer for public works reported the need for a marine railway capable of hauling out large vessels for repairs. The Crandall Engineering Company of New England was contracted for the job. Founder William Crandall began construction of marine railways in the 1840s. A railway dry dock features a cradle that's lowered into the water along inclined tracks. Once the cradle is submerged, a vessel is floated over it. Then the cradle, with the vessel secured on it, is hauled up the tracks until the cradle's deck is clear of the water. In 1913, a small existing railway owned by the Dominion Fish Company in Selkirk was purchased. Construction of the new railway began. By 1915, the work was completed for a total cost of $107,000. Over the years, the Selkirk Marine Railway has undergone significant reconstruction, including a complete cradle replacement in 1968. In 1985, its depreciated replacement value was estimated to be one and a half million dollars. The railway has a 642 metric ton capacity. It consists of a platform cradle 15 meters wide by 53 meters long. The cradle is hauled up three inclined tracks. On dry land, the steel tracks are set on concrete pilings. The submerged portion is set on a treated wood frame fastened to wood piles. The platform is pulled by a geared pulley system with two chains attached to the cradle. The chains pull the cradle which slides on a system of rollers. The chain hauling machinery is powered by a large electric motor, which has been used at this site since its construction. The platform cradle is made of steel with a treated wood deck and stringers. A series of steel columns sit on both sides of the platform. These columns are joined together at the top by wooden catwalks known as docking platforms or gantries. The docking platforms are above the water when the cradle is submerged. Workers walk along the platforms as they guide a vessel's docking movements. Keel and bilge blocks hold the hull in a fixed upright position. The bottom blocks are oak, the others are Douglas fir. The unique blocking pattern for each boat's hull must be obtained before the vessel can be hauled out. Two frame sheds on concrete foundations accompany the railway and platform cradle. One shed houses the chain hauling machinery. The other serves as a storage and maintenance shop. The entire facility sits on a little more than a hectare of land. Given Manitoba's climate, the Selkirk Marine Railway only operates for about six months of the year. Maintenance begins in April or May. Ice jams on the river, as well as ice buildup under the cradle and tracks, can cause extensive damage. A diver checks the three underwater tracks for debris and frost damage, then washes the silt off the tracks using a high-pressure hose. Dredging at the Selkirk Marine Railway is an annual event. It enables the cradle to move up and down the track system. 
the outer tracks of the Selkirk Marine Railway must be dredged to ensure access and to prevent the cradle from derailing. The dredge deposits 60 cubic yards of silt into each scow. The Grand Marais tugboat then hauls the silt further downstream. This process is repeated many times before the job is done. Although river traffic has declined over the years, several major clients still use the Selkirk Marine Railway, such as cruise ships, freighters, and government and public works vessels, including the Coast Guard. Any craft 65 feet or longer needs a dry dock to be hauled out for inspections and repairs. The Selkirk Marine Railway provides needed support to tourism, fishing, resource-based and recreation industries. It also services the government vessels needed to patrol and maintain such a vast inland waterway. The design and function of the Selkirk Marine Railway have remained largely unchanged from its original conception in 1914 as the only railway dry dock between Thunder Bay and the West Coast, the Selkirk Marine Railway is a unique and vital component of Manitoba's marine legacy.